Hello, and welcome to the step-by-step -step guide to the VQ37 VHR injector removal and replacement. In order to successfully complete this project, there are a few tools that are required. First, you'll need a set of needle nose pliers, a socket wrench with at least a 10 millimeter and 12 millimeter attachment. Depending on your setup, you may need a couple more, but this will at least get you through most of the steps and torque wrenches that can adjust for both foot per pound and inches per pound measurements. As always, this video is for informational purposes only and should not be taken as professional advice. Always consult with a qualified Nissan or Infiniti technician for any specific needs. I performed this work on my 2008 Infiniti G37 Coupe. Most of these steps will apply to any vehicle that is currently equipped with a VQ37 VHR engine. I jumped into this project as I wanted to swap out my OEM injectors with those from a Nissan GTR R35 for increased performance. Keep in mind if you swap the OEM injectors for a larger size like I have, you will need to get the vehicle professionally tuned prior to starting the vehicle again for it to run properly. First, lift off the battery compartment cover and disconnect the negative battery terminal using a 10mm socket. Next. If you have an aftermarket intake like I have, you'll need to disconnect the mass airflow sensors. If you still have the stock OEM intake system, skip this step. For this step, you'll need to remove the section of the air intake system that connects to the throttle bodies. For those with an OEM intake system, remove the section circled in the diagram. Regardless of your setup, you'll need to disconnect the PCB breather hoses from the intake. I was replacing mine with some silicone hoses, so you don't need to fully remove yours as I have mine. Continue to remove the parts of the intake system until the throttle bodies are fully exposed. Using a 10mm socket, loosen and remove the four bolts securing each throttle body to the upper intake plenum. It is suggested to remove the bolts in a crisscross pattern. Make sure not to disconnect anything else on the throttle bodies. At the front of the intake plenum, remove the PCV hoses with needle nose pliers. There's a good chance these may be stuck and you can loosen them by gently prying with a flathead screwdriver. You will need to disconnect the EVAP hoses attached to the plenum just behind where the throttle bodies were located. Using a 10mm socket, remove the bolt securing the MAP sensor to the top of the plenum. Gently pull straight up on the sensor as to not damage the O-ring. Using needle nose pliers, disconnect the brake booster hose located at the rear of the plenum. Next, start removing the EVAP purge solenoid by disconnecting the wiring harness. There is an EVAP hose attached to each side of the solenoid and needle nose pliers will be needed to loosen the clamps. After the hoses have been disconnected, you should have access to the two 10mm bolts securing the solenoid to the rear of the plenum. At the rear of the plenum, there is a 10mm bolt on each side securing it to the rear bracket. There are two 12mm nuts securing the plenum to the intake manifold studs on the front and rear and an additional six 12mm bolts in between. Use the diagram on the screen to remove the nuts and bolts from the plenum in reverse order than the sequence shown in the image. Once removed, you'll be able to lift the intake plenum off the manifold. As you can see, the lower gasket was stuck to the intake manifold. I'll gently remove it and clean off any debris so that I may reuse it. If this is your first time removing the plenum, your gasket is more than likely orange instead of the black one shown here. 
I used painter's tape to cover the inlets to the intake manifold to prevent anything from falling in. Next up, we'll need to remove the fuel damper tube to easily access the fuel rail. Start by removing the 10mm bolt securing the bracket here. With the bracket free, you'll be able to push it slightly out of the way to gain access to the 12mm bolt shown here. The last thing securing the fuel damper tube are these two 10mm bolts. Once removed, you'll be able to pull straight up on the damper tube to free it from the fuel rail. Keep in mind, the line may still be under pressure and ensure proper eye protection is worn as fuel may spill. When the damper tube is freed from the fuel rail, you can push it out of the way in preparation for the next step. There are four 10mm bolts securing the fuel rail assembly to the intake manifold. There is also a sequence to remove the bolts in the reverse order than that is shown in the diagram. Notice the arrow in the diagram is oriented to point toward the front of the engine. Carefully lift the fuel rail assembly straight up as to not damage the O-rings on the injectors in the event they can be reused. When the fuel rail is freed, you can pull it gently forward to access and disconnect the wiring harness at the rear. Move the fuel rail assembly to a convenient location and prepare to make a mess. I had to place mine on a piece of cardboard to catch any remaining fuel. Prior to this step, you can attempt to dump excess fuel from the opening where the fuel damper tube was previously installed. There is a metal horseshoe shaped clip securing each injector to the rail. Using a tool with a flat edge, you're able to pry the clips free and ensure to save them as they will be reused. Now you can carefully disconnect each wiring harness from the six injectors. Once disconnected, gently pull straight down on each injector to free it from the rail and not to damage the O-rings. Again, be prepared as this is where the mess will begin. We can install the new injectors or reinstall the old ones if you were just putting them through a good cleaning. The R35 GTR injectors I'm installing are a direct replacement of the OEM ones, provided I ensure the vehicle is properly tuned prior to starting it again. Other injectors may require specific adapters in order to properly install them. Please make sure you're referencing any material included with your new injectors. As the injectors were slightly used, I'm installing new O-rings to give them a fresh start. If you're also installing new O-rings, make sure the green colored O-ring is placed on the end of the injector that goes into the manifold and the black O-ring on the end that goes into the fuel rail. To ensure the injectors are properly seated during reinstallation and the O-rings aren't damaged in the process, I used a small dab of T80 Emulsion Temporary Rubber Assembly Lubricant. Make sure the correct end of the injector is installed into the fuel rail and that it is oriented to reconnect the wiring harness. Reinstall the metal clips to secure each injector to the fuel rail. Inspect each one to ensure it is properly connected. With the fuel rail assembly back together, we can reinstall it to the intake manifold. Place small amounts of the T80 emulsion lubricant on the green O-rings to prevent damage. Reconnect the wiring harness at the rear of the fuel rail, and gently and evenly press down on the fuel rail to seat the injectors into the intake manifold. With the injectors in place, we can reinstall the four 10mm bolts removed during a previous step. There is a specific torque sequence that needs to be followed to ensure everything is properly seated. Following the sequence in the diagram, install each bolt by hand to prevent cross-threading to the soft aluminum manifold. With each of the bolts hand tight, use your torque wrench set at 7 foot-pound of torque and tighten each bolt according to the sequence. Once that is finished, set your torque wrench again to 17 foot per pound of torque and follow the sequence one last time. To reinstall the fuel damper tube, gently push the end with the O-ring into the fuel rail until it is properly seated. Install each of the previously removed 10 millimeter bolts by hand to prevent cross-threading. With your other torque wrench, set it to 80 inches per pound of torque and tighten both bolts.
Reinstall the 12 millimeter bolt at the other end of the fuel damper tube and tighten it to 16 foot per pound of torque. Lastly, reinstall the 10 millimeter bolt previously removed from the bracket sitting atop the fuel damper tube. I wasn't able to find the torque spec for this bolt, so just tighten it, but not overly tighten. When reinstalling the upper intake plenum, line up the hole in the front of it here, as well as the one in the rear, with the two studs on top of the intake manifold. Make sure the lower gasket has been reinserted onto the underside of the plenum and is cleaned of any debris. Place the intake plenum on top of the intake manifold and ensure nothing has been pinched or is otherwise in the way. Using a 12 millimeter socket, reinstall the two nuts and six bolts to secure the intake plenum to the lower manifold. Follow the sequence shown on the diagram and tighten each one to 14 foot pounds of torque. At the front of the plenum, reconnect the two PCV hoses. Reconnect the EVAP hose on the side opposite of the battery compartment. Reinstall the 10 millimeter bolt to the rear bracket and tighten to 80 inches per pound of torque. Then carefully reinsert the MAP sensor as to not damage the O-ring and tighten that bolt to 62 inches per pound of torque. Moving to the other side of the plenum, reconnect the EVAP hose. Reinstall the 10 millimeter bolt to the rear bracket and tighten to 80 inches per pound of torque. Now we'll reinstall the EVAP purge solenoid. Start by placing it into position and tighten both the 10 millimeter bolts to 8 foot per pound of torque. Next, Resecure the EVAP hoses on either side of the unit, and finally, reconnect the wiring harness. Once you're finished reinstalling the EVAP purge solenoid, reconnect the brake booster hose at the rear of the plenum. Before reinstalling the throttle bodies, ensure the gasket is properly seated and cleaned of debris on both sides of the plenum. Then, using a 10 millimeter socket, reinstall the four bolts securing each throttle body to the plenum using the torque sequence shown in the diagram. Tighten each bolt to 75 inches per pound of torque. Reinstall the components of the air intake system that were removed at the beginning of this project. Everything should now be buttoned up and good to go. Don't forget to reconnect your battery and take the vehicle out for a test drive. If you feel these how-to style videos are helpful, and if there are other types of DIY installs you'd like to see, be sure to let me know in the comments. If you guys like this video, make sure to like, and subscribe.